Josef Mengele, the notorious doctor of death. We know the Nazis created the hell of the concentration camps, where doctors carried out medical experiments on human beings. But Josef Mengele was not the first killer in a white coat, and he wasn't the last. Japan had a murderous empire of science that systematically used people as experimental objects, dissecting them alive. Japanese scientists perfected biological weapons in occupied China. They infected entire villages with plague in preparation for an attack on the United States. They were warned. If you attack our soldiers with this kind of weapon of mass destruction, we will um, blow, blow you all up to smithereens. The Japanese get the message. The atom bomb is dropped anyway. For America, it's an opportunity to gather data on radiation poisoning. After 1945, the Japanese experimenters will find they're needed by the victors while secret services on both sides of the Cold War now pursue new goals, like mind control. In the battle for world domination, there's no morality. What counts is results. The scientists experiment with poisons and with drugs. The unleashing of uh, scientists and doctors pretty much do whatever they want where they can play God. Bizarre experiments are carried out on both sides of the Iron Curtain. Josef Mengele is dead. Experiments on human beings continue to this day. A German concentration camp in World War II. Under the cover of war, behind barbed wire, second-rate doctors and scientists decided that victims of the Nazi regime could die a useful death, contributing to the war effort. What happened to a human in icy water? How effective was a new medicine? How could airmen survive at high altitudes? Academics like Dr. Josef Mengele could work towards a professorship. They could test poisons or satisfy their private perversions by collecting human tattoos or making shrunken heads. Mengele himself temporarily spared prisoners from the gas chambers, especially twins, dwarves, Sinti, and Roma. It's still not always clear exactly what he was trying to find out. There are files that have never been released. The few surviving victims have never been told exactly what was done to them. In Dachau, Soviet prisoners were suffocated in pressure chambers, testing the effects of flights to the stratosphere. The experiments were recorded in pitiless detail, recounted to the Nuremberg trials after the war. End of the quotation. The report describes the victim's reactions. Spasmodic convulsions, agonal convulsive breathing, chronic convulsions and groaning, the yells aloud, Convulses his arms and legs. Grimaces, bites his tongue. Gives the impression of someone who is completely out of his mind. But there were doctors of death who were never tried. Who never even had to go into hiding. Japan today. 
For three generations, it has looked to the future. The existence of Unit 731 was only acknowledged in 2002. It was the brainchild of General Ishii. After the terrible experiences of World War I, the great powers of Europe outlawed chemical and biological weapons. Ishii made sure he was fully informed about the situation in Europe. Then he created Unit 731. その、まず化学兵器というのがあまりにも残酷であるということで、え、禁止されたと。それからまあ最近兵器についても、あの、同じように、あの、禁止されたと。そこに目をつけて、それだったら、あの、日本がその兵器を使ったらどんな戦争に
と言って拳銃を抜いて僕の目の前でその二人の男のお腹にパンパンパンパン二発ずつ撃ったんですね。The doctors are to practice operating on gunshot wounds. So, the doctors are to こうに命令されたのが覚えていますそれでそこでやった手術はもっぱら玉を取るのが手術だったんですが手が空いてる人はみんな切断術やったしあるいは気管切開も行っておりました。In May 1945, the eight man crew of an American bomber are dissected in the same way. それでおそらく数千名の看護婦可視化衛生兵それから軍用アサット1万人にもなる人が生体解剖にタッチしてるしかし話してるのは私だけなんです。In Harbin, the unit have their own aeroplane. They use it to spray biological weapons over villages and towns. They experiment with anthrax, the plague, cholera, and tularemia. Once the disease has broken out, the unit examines the dead and the sick. The experiments claim hundreds of thousands of victims. Estimates range between 300,000 and 580,000 deaths. To test weapons like fire bombs, cluster bombs, and ceramic bombs filled with plague bearing fleas, humans are tied to stakes at fixed distances from the explosion. Ishii's men must swear never to reveal any details of their activities. Shortly before the end of the war, he orders all the prisoners to be killed. First, he was killed by a gun, and then he was killed by a gun. And then he was killed by a barbecue. He used that word in a way. He was killed by a gun. He was killed by a gun. They planned to blow up the building too, but in the confusion of the surrender, they couldn't finish the job. Ishii's bioweapons were to be deployed against Russia and the USA. Balloons would carry bombs across the Pacific to the west coast of America. Towards the end of the war, the US captured giant Japanese submarines. These are pictures taken at the surrender. Each of the three completed submarine cruisers carried three seaplanes. They were launched by a catapult on the submarine's bows. A few years ago, it was discovered that the Japanese planned to use them to launch biological weapons against US troops. The targets were the island of Saipan and even the city of San Diego in California. American uh, intelligence had found out that this was、uh, going to、uh, take place, and they sent a message to the Japanese、uh, War Cabinet if you do this, we、uh, know、uh, the bunkers, we know where、uh, Hirohito lives, we know where the War Cabinet lives. If you attack our soldiers, 
with this kind of weapon of mass destruction, we will um, blow, blow you all up to smithereens. The threat works. The attack never takes place. The emperor and the war cabinet survive. Unlike Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Time. A nation celebrates. But already the game has changed. The Cold War has begun. When General MacArthur accepts the Japanese surrender on September the 2nd, 1945, the Americans are not alone. Another ally is present. Russia. It declared war on Japan just three weeks before and has occupied Manchuria. The sun has set on Japan and its empire. The nation that cowed and tyrannized all of Southeast Asia is disgraced. Supreme Allied Commander General MacArthur promises to deal with them with a firm hand. Of the Major taking all necessary dispositions to ensure that the terms of surrender are fully, promptly, and faithfully complied with. General Ishii realizes he will very likely be charged with war crimes. He also knows he has an impressive bargaining chip. The US Secret Service reports that certain Japanese biological scientists are offering the data from their experiments, but are afraid of being prosecuted. MacArthur starts to negotiate. He has to stop the Russians getting hold of the scientists and their data. U.S. intelligence is enthusiastic. This is a unique opportunity to learn about biological weapons tested in rigorous experiments. Experiments on people, not animals. But there's a catch. The Soviets are preparing their own war crimes trial. If they reveal that U.S. servicemen were killed in Japanese experiments, the deal will be impossible. And in Germany, Nazi doctors have just been tried for similar crimes. More trials are planned. For your said crimes on which you have been and now stand convicted, Military Tribunal 1 sentences you, Oscar Schrader, to imprisonment for the full term and period of your natural life, sentences you to death by hanging, to death by hanging, to death by hanging, and may God have mercy upon your soul. The murderers of the concentration camps have been tried and punished, or at least some of them. Here too, deals were done. Many of the doctors were able to continue their careers in hospitals and universities for decades after the war. And the specimens they prepared from the camp victims were used to teach students. In some cases, to the present day. In Japan, Ishii's data is too tempting to turn down. 1950, war breaks out in Korea. The first proxy war of the superpowers. The United States considers deploying biological and nuclear weapons. The communists accuse America of launching biological weapons from Ishii's arsenal against China. America accuses its enemies of a concerted campaign of disinformation. The dispute continues to this day. But there are strong rumors that Dr. Ishii is once again active behind the scenes. その続きとして石井氏郎は最近戦を指導するためにアメリカのアメリカの飛行機に乗って朝鮮に行ったんだというふうに言う人が何人もいます。それから、その見返りにもらったお金をあのみんなに分けているんだと。それはある意味での口止
An international commission of left-wing scientists investigated the accusations against the Americans. They found traces of the same insects and strains of bacteria used by Ishii in his experiments. Bacteria and animals not normally found in China. In 1989, documents were found in Russia that did point to a communist disinformation campaign against the USA. But many experts find the wartime evidence convincing. Eh,朝鮮戦争で、え、行われた、と言われている、う、最近戦の、ま、特にあの、爆弾の形とかですね、それからあの、昆虫ですね。そういうものが731の研究をそのまま投資したものであるということが科学的にも証明されていますので、何らかの形の実験的なものにしろ最近戦をやったというのはあの事実ではないかというふうに私は思っています。The commission spoke to witnesses who claimed to have seen American planes dropping cartons, canisters, feathers and masses of insects. They also questioned American prisoners of war who made confessions while in North Korean hands and later retracted them when faced with a court martial back in the US. The second lecture was given at K-46, the advanced base of the 18th fighter bomber group in Korea here. This lecture was given on the 22nd of January, 1952. This lecture was much more complete on the uh, bacteriological weapons, which were, we would be using. This lecture lasted for approximately two hours. Then the only other instruction I received, of course, was the order to carry out my germ warfare mission. Senator O'Neill, it has been alleged by Chinese communist sources that you have confessed to participation in so-called germ warfare bombing raids over North Korea. Would you care to make a statement regarding these charges? I most certainly would. I would like to state that these charges are false and absurd. I did sign a confession relating to germ warfare, but the statements contained in this confession were false. They were obtained under duress from the Chinese communist and by making these statements, I deliberately attempted to put in as much as was false and ridiculous as I could possibly get away with. It's very curious. A large number of strange confessions are coming out of the Korean War. The CIA believe that they're being extracted using drugs and brainwashing techniques. They begin to fear the communists are ahead in the development of psychotropic substances. But where could they be getting their expertise from? The intelligence services have found a brand new field for their work. The subject reaches the desk of the new director of the CIA, Alan Dulles. Joseph Douglas was then a senior analyst for U.S. government intelligence agencies. Within about three weeks after Alan Dulles was appointed director of the CIA, he gave a talk to a group of uh, his Princeton friends, uh, which was on brain warfare, and which he told about this a new phase in warfare in the Cold War had been entered into and that uh, the Soviets were, were involved in the development of drugs which made the, uh, the people act as though there were some hidden master uh, whose instructions they were reporting as though they were a phonograph machine. And our inability to really react the way we should because it is such a way of thinking that we deplore, something that we don't want to deal with. It's like having to to go into areas that we don't want to admit even exist. This new form of chemical warfare has emerged in the Korean War. 
A North Korean propaganda film shows the preferred torture methods of those years, including brutal violence and waterboarding. Often used in combination, even today, with another interrogation tool, drugs. In Korea, U.S. forces encounter soldiers from a supposedly neutral nation, Czechoslovakia. They're here to run a field hospital behind North Korean lines, officially for humanitarian reasons. Unofficially, they're working under the direct instructions of the Soviet Union, helping them prepare for World War III. We know this because in 1968, a Czech general, Jan Shena, defected to the West. Shena was then the highest-ranking officer of the Warsaw Pact ever to change sides. He knew exactly what his countrymen were doing for their Soviet masters. Shena claims that the Czech field hospital existed to carry out experiments on prisoners of war, including Americans. Bohumil Eisolt is the only surviving doctor from that hospital. This is the hospital where he worked. Dr. Eiselt is adamant about what really went on. To byli lidi z kriminálu, kteří zločinci běžní. Pač si taky se poranili a taky jsem jich několik operoval. Různí vrahové zloději a taková. Joseph Douglas debriefed Jan Shena after he arrived in America. Shena gave him more details. They were doing everything and there was no anesthetic they were used. Uh, and they would, they would do amputations and just wait and see how long it would take the person to die. Shena claims that many American prisoners of war died in experiments with bioweapons, drugs, and radioactivity. Windham and American in the Vojskach were not there. They were all the same. They were all the same. They were all the same. Eisel's confused denials make no difference to the fact that Czechoslovakia already had a long history in advanced work on psychotropic drugs. And when the communists took over in 1948, that work would be continued, even stepped up. But now, on the instructions of a new master, Stalin's Soviet Union. As long ago as the 1930s, Czech scientists had been experimenting with mescaline and other truth drugs. They could be especially useful to a small country. Milan Kuntz was a chemist working for the Czech military. Armáda potřebuje chemické zbraně proti velkým jednotkám kdežto tak výzkum nebo respektive tajná služba je používá proti jedno, většinou proti jednotlivcům. Dále způsob zasazení, že armády nestojí přímo proti sobě, ale jsou v určité vzdálenosti, kdežto tajná služba prostě zasahuje vlastně přímo proti jednotlivci, tím, že, že mu to dá do jídla nebo prostě jiným způsobem přímo na tělo. The Czech Secret Service developed their poisons and drugs in anonymous villas in wealthy Prague suburbs. And they worked in a very similar way to their shady counterpart in the Soviet Union, Laboratory 12. 
All we know about that is that it was created in 1921, four years after the Russian Revolution. It's a secret center for the KGB. Like the Czech hospital in Korea, it tried out its methods on thieves and murderers. Vadim Bierstein has investigated its story. There was a general order through the system, I mean, through the uh, commissariat, that uh, this kind of... Uh, about the creation of a secret laboratory. What that laboratory did, very few persons knew. Uh, the decisions uh, uh, about uh, that people were used was, of course, made by only the highest level politburos. The laboratory developed deadly poisons for the secret services. There was a decision that uh, only uh, sentenced to death. Mm -hmm. uh, to their understanding, useful usage of this material. In Laboratory 12, they killed enemies of the state and later German prisoners of war. The files also record the justifications given by the executioners. All of them said some excuses. Not like it was uh, necessary, we didn't think about uh, it. Were this, they were not people for us, they were enemies uh, destined for destruction. We needed, you know, the state uh, needed to destroy them. And this is all. It didn't matter if they would be shot or uh, died of poisoning. As policies changed in the Kremlin, the laboratory would be closed and then reopened under a different name. The London Umbrella murder and the polonium poisoning of Alexander Litvinenko may well have been carried out from this laboratory. Back in the 1940s and 50s, special use of the drugs was to extract confessions for show trials, as here in Czechoslovakia. Some of the victims died of poisoning not long after their trials were over. Later, Emil Svech was a political prisoner for 15 years, and he was repeatedly interrogated. A oni tie otázky a kdo, čo a kde a tak ďalej a tak ďalej. No ja, ja čo som vyprával, prakticky neviem. Ja som sa držal, ja som vedel o tom toľko, že človek si má vytvoriť, pokiaľ kontrolu má. A neviem, tak keby mal človek jeden sen, taký reálny, zlý, a z ktorého sa nedá zbaviť a to sa vám prelína do tej skutočnosti a neviete si s tým poradiť jednoducho. Tak jednoducho rozpad osobnosti a kúkáte, ne, neviete čo ďalej jednoducho. Tak ho zavolali potom voláku onu, e, súdružku a tá doniesla, neviem či to bola káva a k tomu ešte voláke, e, v tej káve niečo volá. Tak som si vypil a tieto veci pomaly mi zmizli. Parallel with these chemical and biological tests, both superpowers were secretly building up their knowledge of the murderous radiation effects of the atom bomb. The Americans had a head start. They'd not only built the first bomb, but they had tested it on people. As soon as they could, the Americans sent in teams of doctors and cameramen to observe and record the medical effects of the blasts at Hiroshima and Nagasaki on adults, children and infants. They discovered radiation burns and open wounds that refused to heal. They offered no medical care to the survivors. They were collecting data for use in fighting future wars. Decades later, the Americans themselves were to judge this chapter as one of dubious morality.
peacetime atomic tests continue. The US military expose their own soldiers to radiation. And the experts are particularly interested in the civilians who live in the fallout area, the so-called down windows. They never explain the dangers to the troops. The Soviet military are even more careless with their soldiers' lives. They're desperate to catch up. At the Totskoya atom bomb test, some 45,000 soldiers and prisoners are deliberately exposed to radiation. Thousands died, there and then, or of the after effects. This test was and remained top secret. The files were later destroyed or altered. At Tortskoya, they also used animals tethered at precise distances from the epicenter of the blast. In his CIA debriefing, Czech defector Jan Schena claimed to have seen a Soviet army film depicting a nuclear test. In it, human beings took the place of animals like these. Joseph Douglas remembered his description. It was the Soviets using uh, prisoners political prisoners, particularly they liked to use Hungarians that opposed them in Hungary, and U.S. POWs as guinea pigs in testing the effects of nuclear weapons. Radiation, thermal, blast, the whole thing, the real explosion. And at spaced intervals from the ground zero, they would have men chained uh, so they could see the effects of the weapons on the men at different distances. Shana claimed to have seen the film at a special showing for the Czech general staff. They went from people that were incinerated almost instantly to out at the extremes where they would be dazed, they would be, have a hard time regaining balance, they were writhing in agony. Obviously, you know, they didn't have long to live. And he said it was the most revolting thing that they had ever seen any place. After 15 years of tests and analysis, the Soviets had caught up with the Americans. But by 1965, it became evident to all of them that chemical and biological warfare munitions, uh, and the pharmaceutical line of that uh, were ultimately far more important than nuclear weapons because they could be used without destroying the world. And to get their supplies of chemical and pharmaceutical weapons, the Russians turned once again to their experts, the Czechs. Money was thrown at the experiments. Top state talents made movies about the work for their government bosses. It was the late 1960s. The drug of choice was LSD. Látka začíná působit až po určité době. Zatím si uděláme záznam mozkové činnosti před pokusem. Zavřete oči. Otevřete oči. On both sides of the Iron Curtain, doctors and scientists experimented with an ever-growing arsenal of chemical weapons. Today, some of them have been turned into medicines to treat mental illness. In their real experiments behind the scenes, the Czechs believe they can disable whole enemy units by putting LSD in their drinking water. 
these volunteers, senior officers, attested on their decision-making skills after taking LSD. How will they fare in a fictional crisis? At this time, Czechoslovakia is the world's biggest producer of LSD for military use. Jan Schiener told Joseph Douglas that drugs were an important and permanent part of communist military strategy. He had heard Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev say so himself. Deception and drugs are our first two echelons in the war against capitalism. And when those two echelons have done their job, then will it be the time for us to use our tanks. He was sort of chiding Marshal Malinowski, who wanted to use his tanks now, today. And Khrushchev said, no, no, Marshal. You know, Sergei, to you, today is important. To me, tomorrow is sufficient. For the Soviets, the Czechs developed a range of powerful drugs for all purposes. To induce fear, to cause pain, to make people trustful, aggressive, or talkative. Jan Shena claimed that these substances were mixed into the food of foreign diplomats. LSD produced the most powerful sense of paranoia. The Czechs said they could produce any state, from tears to madness. By now, the Americans could see the potential too. They overcame their distaste for mind-altering drugs. They tested LSD, sometimes on people who didn't know they were being given hallucinogenic substances. There were deaths, often caused through paranoia. the CIA wrote a wish list of what they wanted to achieve. Mind control, fake illnesses, truth serums, implanting and erasing memories. When Joseph Douglas debriefed Czech General Jan Shena, he discovered that the Soviets had something similar. It's a pretty good list, and it almost corresponds item by item with the CIA list, you know, amazing. When America got onto something, it was soon time to make it public. This film shows how drugs can be used for military purposes. Here, a volunteer GI is testing his coordination before taking LSD. Now, put this one up. Now do it. This soldier is a volunteer too. But not everyone was. The actual experiments on, on humans conducted by the CIA were very numerous and uh, believed to be very damaging by many people. Experiments like this incense deprivation. The withdrawal of sensory input can lead to hallucinations and madness. There are reports of experiments that ended fatally. The CIA has destroyed most of the files. Some journalists have tried to get them released. But nobody in the intelligence community wants to do that. 
or the government because of what it would reveal. And that leads to United States war crimes and possible murder and a very, very messy, very, very messy picture. The CIA carries out brain operations and attempts to influence consciousness. When the electrode touches the brain with its gentle electrical current, it is as though the electrode touched a wire recorder or a, or a strip of film and he relives a period of time. I have a sudden feeling, as though I lived through all this before. Now I see them. They're laughing, my friends. And I'm with them in a house in South Africa. They're my old friends. The aim of experiments like this is to produce suicide bombers who have no idea what they've been programmed to do. The search continues for personality-changing drugs, new nerve poisons, and for antidotes and defenses against the drugs the enemy might invent. And humans are needed for all these experiments. The scientists of the intelligence community reject experiments with animals, not out of some sense of animal welfare, but because they know that animal reactions bear no resemblance to the effects of a drug on humans. That's why the ideal guinea pigs are fit and healthy enemy prisoners. The US has never gone that far. In the Vietnam War, they allowed Seventh-day Adventists who refused to fight to volunteer for medical tests instead. At a high security unit at Fort Detrick, they were exposed to anthrax, plague, and tularemia. Immediately afterwards, they were given the same antidotes that soldiers would receive in time of war. It could be a painful recovery, but the US authorities consider this the perfect ethical experiment. According to Jan Schena, the Soviets had no qualms about using and disposing of the US soldiers their allies captured in Vietnam, the first new blood since Korea. Shana said they flew the Americans first to Prague, where they could be quarantined against tropical diseases. That's where he saw them. Met a lot of the planes and saw the Americans getting off, and he said, you know, they weren't the John Wayne types, they were all stumbling a little bit and figured that they'd been drugged and they didn't know where they were or where they were going or what they were in for. The collapse of the Soviet Union and the end of the communist bloc might have put an end to the competition between the powers. But it hasn't been quite that simple. The new Czech and Slovakian republics have now joined the European Union and NATO. In the first Gulf War, Czech chemical and biological experts fought side by side with the Americans against Saddam Hussein's armies. Maybe that was only right. They'd almost certainly had a hand in training the enemy. But Czech and Russian archives remain tightly closed. Gulf War syndrome, the Moscow theater siege, Development, stockpiling, and testing continue on all sides. The mentality of these Secret Service people, that they are gods and uh, everything they are doing is really good for the state. It goes on right now the same way, this mentality and these ideas. DVDs of this program can be purchased for educational use from VEA by calling 1-800-034-282.